Welcome to another video of L5 Star FC. And yes, we are doing play rings on the game against AC Milan yesterday. What a game it was. It was it was an Anfield special again. Uh, Champions League group day. It's nice to pick up the first three points in the first game. Um, and yeah, today we are here to do play ratings. Uh, I'm glad to say that we have Ben alongside us. Uh, ben, how are you? Now I'm good, man. I'm, I'm feeling positive after yesterday's game. You know, I feel like we definitely needed it. As a fan base, you know, returning to the Champions League, especially after last season, it was good to you know, you know, to to know that we can still pull off victories like that at Anfield. Yeah, certainly. I think um, the fans were a big part of our victory yesterday. I think the fans there were absolutely electric. The atmosphere there yeah. was electric. I think we've missed having a full Anfield just like that on a European night. But enough of that. Yeah. Let's get into the goalkeeper. Alison Becker, what would you give him for yesterday's game? Alison, I'd say seven. I feel like with the goals that we conceded, there was nothing really he could do about it. But he also didn't have, you know, a wild game. He was just there. So I just give Alison a seven. Yeah, I agree. I think he didn't have much to do in this game. I think AC Milan did an attack in the best of ways. Um, I think they tried counter attack on us, worked uh, twice. But I think he didn't have a lot to do. And again, he's not at fault for the two goals. Uh, he's not an octopus where he can put his hands out anywhere. But yeah, I think uh, I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him a seven as well. Um, Andy Robertson, uh, what do you think? I think he played very well. I think his performance was the one that was a bit yeah. underrated. I think his crossing and start of the game was very good. But also keeping Salamakas quite quiet as well. He was very good. I think that he's done that twice in a row now, keeping Rafinha yeah. quiet. And he kept Santa Marcus quiet as well. So I think he had a great game. I'm going to give him an A out of 10. What about you, Ben? Um, I'd say 7.5. Pretty close. He did have a good game. But I feel like in order for him to get an 8, he would have maybe, he should have maybe given, you know, an assist or... But he did have a good game though, so I'll give him 7.5 for me. Yeah, fair enough. Um. Uh, we move up, move on to his fullback partner, Trent Alexander Arnold, the scouser on our team. He got the first goal, uh, great goal, great run, great link up with him and Salah. Um, I think he was great. Uh, what rating would you give him? Yeah. Um, I'd give him an eight point five. I feel like yesterday he showed, like you know, why many regard him as the best right back in the world. I feel like he had a, like an insane game, man. So yeah, eight point five. His job. Playing was on par as usual. His crossing was on par as usual. So yeah, yeah, uh, I completely agree. I think he was absolutely great. I think the way he, uh, uh, the way the way he got that first goal, he absolutely put us in the driving seat. Of course, we could have had many more, uh, many after, but yeah. uh, it was just that's how just uh, that's how football is. But I think um, the way he overlapped was absolutely brilliant. Yes, I think that went under the radar. His overlap was very good. But I think um, a lot of people would say that he is at fault for not going back to help his, to not mark his man for the second goal, I think. Uh, but yeah. those, those are things that everyone's going to pick up. But I think he had a very good performance. I'm going to give him an 8.5, just like you. And we move on to the two centre-halves. Of course, many as many expected, um, a lot of people did say Virgil van Dijk would start. They were all in our predicted uh, lineups. Uh, but Martin Gomez, uh, I think Ben, if I'm correct, you said Gomez would start on the uh, starting eleven yeah, position. Um, yeah, so did. yeah, I think I think I that think was, was going to be on the bench though. Yeah, same. I think I think yeah, I said it as well. It's uh, Van Dijk. Van Dijk will start. Konate, Gomez, or Matic. But it was a shock to see Van Dijk drop. But to be honest, I think people have to be ready for these type of games for Van Dijk to be dropped because you cannot forget yeah. he just come off an ACL injury. And if you keep on playing yeah, him again, playing him again, he's going to get fatigued. And when you have a fatigue, then you're more likely to get injured. But um, yeah. what would you think on the centre-backs? Uh, what would you give them? For oh, Gomez, it's a tough one because I feel like he, he did have a good game except for, you know, those five or so minutes when we conceded. So I would say, I don't I want to give him a 6.5, but I feel like it's a bit harsh. But just for the fact that, you know, I feel like I don't want to blame him for that goal, but for especially for the first goal, he was quite like rubbish, you know, dragged him out of position. And I feel like that kind of opened the space for them to score the, mm. the, the first goal. So 
Oh, it's a tough one, man. But I'd say um, six point five, man. Yeah, I think um, I think it was massive for him to get ninety minutes under his uh, belt in uh, yeah, yeah, such a big massive. game. I think again, he's probably going to come off a more serious injury than Virgil Van Dijk, and he's going to be mm-hmm. slowed into the team slowly, slowly. But I think he was good. I think, um, of course, when Rabbit scored, I think he he moved out of his position. He should have at least told Matic get the man, or he should have followed him. But um, I think that's just a bit unlucky by it. But um, yeah, big nine minutes under his belt, and hopefully he can have many more games to play. And we move on to Joel Matic. Um, I wouldn't say it was the best of his games yesterday against AC Milan, but I think he got the job done. I think, um, again, uh, the second goal or first goal, I'm not really sure. He did make a mistake where he just went off his leg and he could have just put his knee up and blocked it. But then again, yeah. as I said, it's football, fluky things will happen. Uh, but I'm going to give Matip a 6.5 as well. What, uh, what do you give Matip then? Yeah, I think I think I I agree because I feel like both of them get a 6.5 because none of them, you know, took that leadership role upon themselves and they said, okay, Virgil isn't here, so I'm going to be the leader in this back four. And I feel like if maybe Joel did that, then maybe... He could have had a higher rating for me, but I think yeah, 6.5 would do. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, now, we move on to the midfield. And I think this midfield was crucial because, as a lot yeah. of us said, the, this, the midfield could win the game. And the boy did it win the game. He absolutely had Kessie and Ben Asser on lock. Henderson, I yeah. think he was great. Uh, Naby Keita was excellent. Uh, Fabinho doing what Fabinho does best but let's start with Fabinho in the six uh, Ben what were your overall thoughts on his game what uh, rating would you give him I feel like it's just like a standard for Fabinho to get like an eight minimum every game i would give him an eight man because he's such a monster in that midfield like every ball he wins it it's like like I, I'm out of words even like yeah, like, man, we have such a good deal. Know, he can hands. basically read, bro. Yeah, it's yeah like man. he can read how players are going to dribble and he can just get his toe in first to win the ball back, man. So for Fabinho, I definitely say an eight. He's just... Yeah, yeah he's yeah. class, man. Honestly, I he's think... Class, um, man. Bro, that, uh, when we did sign him in 2018 after the final, it was very, very unexpected. Yeah. He was inches away from joining Manchester United. And uh, yeah, just yeah, yeah. imagine what Manchester United would have been like right now with Fabinho. Right now with Fabinho. Be yeah, crazy, they are in man. dire need of a six. And we are so, mm. so lucky to have such a world-class DM in our team because he, he reads the game so, so well. So well he's always intercepting. If no, he's always putting his head in the way. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm going to give Fabinho a nine. I think he was absolutely excellent. Um, let's move on to the right centre mid. Of course, Captain Fantastic came in clutch. Yeah. Jordan Henderson. <laughs> what would you give him, Ben? Man, I'd give him 9.5. That that's what I'd give him because I just feel like he ran that game, he controlled the like he controlled the whole game from that centre mid, and that goal just topped it off. It topped off his performance. And you know, sometimes you wish you would, you know shoot from distance more often because he has it in his locker and yeah, sometimes he's done it against he, Chelsea yeah. he's done it against Manchester City and yeah, yeah he did it against AC Milan now yeah because sometimes he'll be in the positions mm. and then everybody's screaming like shoot and then he'll make like these sideways passes and then yeah I remember straight like, after just... the goal straight <laughs> after the goal when he scored he had a shooting position and everyone was like just shoot yeah. just shoot yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I feel think like Jordan had yeah oh yeah he carried on yeah. Carried on. No, I was just going to say, I feel like the goal kept up his performance, man. That was a real captain's display. And for that, I'd give him 9.5. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I think Jordan is, I think uh, those last five minutes where we can see those two goals, I think uh, him pressing, him over committing on the press, I think that creates space in behind. And I think his first half, everyone was good in the first. Uh, uh, everyone was good until the two goals. Everyone was yeah, amazing. Man. When those two goals happened, I think... I don't know what happened. The whole team just capitulated. And I'm glad that Klopp got the head together. And um, I think he wasn't good in the first half, but 
Second half, he pulled up, scored the clutch goal. Yeah. Gerard Ask, uh, that's what captain yeah. yes, sir. should do. That's what captain has to do. And yeah, yes, he's sir. absolutely amazing. And it's so I'm so glad to get him tied down to a new long term contract. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna give Henderson a 9.5 just like you as well. And we move on to Nabilad. Nabilad, very <laughs> unexpected to say, very unexpected yeah. that he would start. But I game. did say, I did mm. say if Thiago doesn't play, Nabi would play. Yeah, but I think um, if you saw in this way that Thiago re- was rested for the Leeds game and Thiago was played, so I think if you had got a good prediction in, I think you would have got it right because Keita did start this game and Thiago was benched. But mm. I think Keita was absolute. I think yeah. Keita was very good. I think his performance went under the radar. I think yeah, me too, him man. Take he was he wasn't scared to take the ball. He wasn't scared to come up against Ben Asir. He wasn't scared to come up against Kessie. And yeah. I think a lot of people were saying, oh, Kessie's a very, very uh, athletic. He has a lot of stamina. He's a, he, he's worth his events. I think Nami Keita really showed, Nami, Nami Keita really showed that Kessie's not all that. He always went past yeah. Kessie. He always went past Ben Asir. I think he's absolutely brilliant. I think he stayed fit now. I think it's, but it's been like, he stayed, he, had, he was fit for Norwich. He was fit for Chelsea, I think. He was fit for Burnley. So I think he, he his fitness has been good. So hopefully he can keep yeah. it up because this is where it's going to tell if we have the squad depth because, look, we have Norwich on Tuesday. We have um, we have, we have the Crystal Palace on Saturday. So I think mm-hmm. now the fixtures are going to come thick and fast. So this is where Naby Keita has yeah, to be sure. fit. But I think for Naby, I'm going to give him a... I'm going to give him a... Seven, uh, I'm going to give him an eight. I think he deserves an eight. What do you think, Ben? <laughs> Um, I think I'd agree with the eight man because Nebi is just I love watching Nebi play, dude. Because when he gets the he's ball, so smooth. You know, he's so smooth, he's so exactly, bro. Yeah. Like, he just, turns yeah. and like he reminds me of he reminds me a bit of Kaka, although I never watched him play. I've yeah. seen like clips, he just reminds me of Kaka, yeah. like how he glides the ball across the pitch. And also, like, if somebody's pressing him, it's like he's so calm yeah. on the ball, he's always he'll gonna turn, he's always gonna make a pass. Best. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's it's just going to be the press. Like, to think a few years ago, we had, what, Henderson, Wijnaldum, and Milne in our midfield. So it's actually refreshing to see a player like Keita be in there, you know, that can beat players, that can, you know, bring other people into the game, man. That's yeah. really refreshing to see. So I, I'd agree. I'd, I'd give him an eight. Yeah, um, absolutely spot on. We move, we move on to the right winger. The king of Egypt, the king of Liverpool, Mohamed Salah. What do you think, Ben? Um, I give him an eight point five. You know, because he did score the winning goal. He missed the penalty also, but at least he didn't let the penalty miss get him down. Affect him, kind of. Yeah. yeah, it kind of like you know made him. It looked like it made him more hungry to score. Yeah, because so, straight after that he had straight after that he was just. Although he, he, although he went pretty high, straight after that he was taking chances because I think he yeah. was really eager to score. Yeah. So for that, I'll give him an eight point five, man. And that finish, like when he scored the equalizing goal, it wasn't an easy finish, man. Like yeah, people okay. underestimated. Yeah. yeah. The timing, he had to get the time right because because Manian, I think Manian probably confused him because yeah, mo- most keepers would come out for that, but Manian stayed, yeah. and I think. To have the composure to just use your left foot and just put it into the side netting, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah, and his link up with Trent on the right was good as usual. So for that, I'll give him 8.5. Man. Yeah, um, same. I'm going to go 8.5 with Salah. I think he was, he played kind of different role in this game. I think what Klopp was trying to do was, um, what Klopp was trying to do was get Theo Hernandez and just spread him out because Theo Hernandez yeah, really had to, to stick with Salah. So, when that happened, we saw the amount of times Trent got into that space. That's what I'm saying. Trent was so good on his overlap yesterday because the amount yeah. of space that Salah exploited for Trent was unbelievable. Uh, of course, we know he plays as an inside forward normally, but he was so wide and he absolutely he absolutely mm-hmm. executed that role perfectly, keeping Theo Hernandez uh, with him, creating all that space. And of course, uh, getting that all-important goal, um, I, think he, I think he was absolutely um, a good goal. Good, uh, good composure. Um, that's uh, but the penalty. Uh, I think it wasn't that good, that good of a pen. But who cares? Yeah. We won three two. Uh, it's only his second yeah. penalty. He's missed as well. By the way, he missed one against Huddersfield. Yeah. 
And now you missed one against AC Milan, but it's all good. We move on to the striker, and this raised a few eyebrows when the team selection came up, surely in the group chat as well. I think yeah. everyone expected Jota to go central, Marnie to go left, but that wasn't the case. And Divo Karigi stepped up. Um, I think Origi actually didn't play that bad. I think he was okay, but I don't think he was excellent. I don't think he was good. I think he got the assist, which was absolutely great. I think the assist was actually good. The pass was very good to find Salah. Uh, but I think yeah. sometimes he just looked a bit lackluster, maybe because he hasn't played in a while. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was it was it wasn't a bad performance. But um, yeah, I'm gonna give him a six. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a six point five. What do you think, man? I think I'll agree with six point five just because of the fact that he got the assist in the second half. If he didn't, it would have probably been lower because I feel like he didn't have a good first half. The first half he looked kind of a bit lost. You know, mm. I like I barely yeah, saw him get in the, the first ball. half. He couldn't get, he didn't get on the ball. All. And even in the second half, okay, he got the assist. But for the whole game, he didn't, you know, he didn't really test the keeper. Mm. So that was kind of, you know, the disappointing thing. That's why I was actually hoping Sadio would start. Because even though Sadio has, you know, had a bad run of form, he'll still test the keeper. He'll still have shots at goal. Because because eventually the goal's going to come. Like we saw against Leeds, Sadio's goal came for yeah. the third one. And it's like, I don't know, is it maybe a confidence thing or what? Where, you I know, think, no, no, I think for Rigi, I think for Rigi, yeah. uh, it's just the more games he play, I think you'll, he'll get more fit. I think he hasn't yeah. played a game in a very long time. That was his first game in a very long time yesterday. So I think, of course, he looked a bit of the pace, but you can't, re- that's his first game played in a while. So of course, he's not yeah. going to be that fit. Of course, he's not going to. Yeah. He's, he's not going to be that confident. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Um, so, what were you going to give him? Do you give him 6.5? 6.5 as well, man. 6.5, fair, fair. Then we move on to the left winger, Diogo Jota. Uh, ben, what do you think about Diogo Jota's performance? Um, I think he played well, actually, even though he didn't score. He got in the positions... Tested out the keeper a few times. So for that, I'll give him a 7.5. Just because yeah, I feel I think, like he did have mm-hmm. some chances where, you know, he could have scored, but he didn't. But I, he, he played well overall, man. Yeah, I think there was this one chance on the four minute mark for the overall shot away. Tomori, what a block. Oh my days. I think that was going yeah, in yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, I remember. It was going in and mm-hmm. Tomori, oh, I don't even know what he did. Uh, but yeah, I think Jota, I think it was a good performance. I think his passing is slowly starting to improve, which is a good thing. I think yeah. his passing, if he just becomes a better passer and not afraid to pass the ball, he will become such a world-class player in the future. He's already a class player now, but if he just yeah. gets that passing a little bit more up a level, he's absolutely going to be an amazing player. I think he was good. I think he put the AC Milan defenders under pressure, confused them a bit. Uh, and yeah, he had good shots and goal, but was unlucky to convert. But I think... Wasn't the best of his performances, but I think a seven is a fair rating for Diogo Jota. Yeah. Um, we move. I don't think there was. I don't think there was a lot of substitutes for them to make an impact. I think, yeah, Curtis Jones did come yeah. on. Yeah, um, he looked good. He looked. Yeah, Curtis Jones. For, Mar- for for the few for the few minutes he was in, he looked you know positive. Yeah. Especially because I think this is his first game since coming back from injury, so. He looked positive, man. I'm excited for him this season, especially. I can't wait. I think he'll play against Norwich. So I'm just excited for him, man. He looked really good, especially playing on the left wing. Yeah. Yeah, I he think looked, he's really I think good he's man. good on the left. He played on that yeah. left against Manchester United in the cup last season. So yeah, um uh Thiago came on as well, 71st minute. Yeah. Um I think there wasn't there wasn't a lot to do, although he did keep the game yeah. under control, you know, slow down the tempo, and of course. Mane didn't have enough of an impact, although he did come on the 77th minute. And um, what are your ring? Oh, yeah, Milner as well. Milner and Oxley Chamberlain came. Yeah, I think Oxley Chamberlain was decent. I don't think he was that bad, to be honest. Uh, Milner, yeah. doing what Milner does best, uh, experienced yeah. footballer. I remember he, he was taking it to the corner flag and then Curse was a yeah, shot. Yeah, I remember, man. 
yeah, that's where experience takes a big part in these games to just kill time and slowly. Uh, but finally, yeah, the sense. ratings on Klopp. How do you think he manages games? How do you think his substitutions went? Uh, what do you think on Jurgen Klopp? Uh, it's a tough one. But I don't know why Sadio didn't start. That's a question mark. Virgil is obviously it's understandable. But I would give... I'd give us an eight because we won. And obviously, yeah. he must have said something at halftime for, you know us to lift our heads and go back in there and also not concede in the second half as well. So, mm-hmm. and I feel like his substitutions were actually quite good. I didn't mind the subs really. Um, he subbed on, you know, the right players, you know, the right it, it, it happens really. Yeah. So, cause sometimes when he makes subs, you're like, what, like, what are you thinking? Yeah. But now I feel like he did, he, he, yeah. he made the right subs. I'll, I'll give, I'll give him an eight, man. Yeah, I think um, uh, pretty similar to yours. I think we were absolutely fuming when Origi started because we expected Marnie to start. But you look at that now and it was a master yeah. job by, by Klopp. I think he trusts his player a lot. But yeah. as we said on another video, and this could be for another video to discuss, Klopp does put too much trust in his players. But this time it did work and you have to give him credit. I think the way he set up against AC Milan to start, bro, we had them on lock for the first... the. Until they scored the two goals, as I said yeah. previously, as as soon as they scored two goals, we 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 were just lost. But before those two goals, wow, we were amazing. We already had thirteen attempts created, and we had like yeah. six shots at goal. So I think that performance was absolutely great. The way he set up tactically, and I think the second half, I think the way he got the boys coming out, I think AC Milan did have a goal ruled out for offside. Thankfully, yeah. I think that definitely gave man. yeah that definitely gave a place a knock in the head that we need to really go out all kinds yeah, basic and up, I man. think yeah and I think Klopp was calm about the situation I don't think he was that angry because he knew we would keep it up but yeah substitutions were good as well uh, I'm gonna give uh, Klopp an eight point five and yes that wraps up today's video on the pairings against AC Milan um, uh, thank you for four hundred subscribers that the like this video, share. And yes, we will be back for an AC Milan reaction, hopefully with all the boys. And uh, yeah, we got a lot more content, a lot more live streams, a lot more guests uh, coming on the channel. So stay tuned and you'll never walk alone.